Welcome everyone to episode 3 of Beer on the Brain, Where Do the Wild Yeast Roam? In this episode I'm going to talk quickly about where wild yeast come from. Now for the longest time both brewers and scientists thought we had this, an uh, this question answered. We thought yeast were on fruit. It made a lot of sense. Fruit have lots of sugar in them, yeast like sugar. The two kind of go together. This all fell apart though once people started actually looking for yeast on fruit. So for example, people looking for yeast in cider orchards found that less than 1% of apples had detectable yeast on them. And in that 1%, yeast were a minute portion of the total um, microbiota per, uh, uh, present on those apples. Same is true for grapes, with the one exception of grapes from wineries that dumped their leaves in the field where about 10% of grapes can have detectable yeast on them. And of course, in some ways, this idea doesn't even make sense. And as one example, I spent a summer in the late 1990s working up at Fork McPherson. This is a place in northern Canada that gets about five months a year where it's above freezing. And there's about two weeks right at the end of that where there's fruit on some of the berry bushes and whatnot. So what would the yeast do for the rest of that time? I mean, they've got to be living somewhere else. And even though that this seems to be a place where yeast shouldn't survive, I came home with multiple yeast isolates uh, that up until about five years ago I actually used to brew with. So the other idea was tree bark, but again this doesn't really work out that well. In one study only about four percent of oak trees had yeast on them and oak trees are supposed to be the place to find yeast. And the thing that seems to limit the growth of yeast on tree bark are other microorganisms like the uh, bacteria Pseudomonas, which produces a pretty potent toxin that will kill off the yeast. So that raises the question, well, where do the wild yeast actually come from? And it turns out this is a really, really hard question to answer, and it's because of us. We have factories that produce things like bread, and of course a bread factory is going to be spewing huge amounts of yeast up into the air. Breweries will do this. Agriculture does this. Anything where yeast are present sort of in a human environment spread yeast throughout the surrounding area and as a consequence it can be very very hard to figure out if a so-called wild yeast actually is wild or if it was placed there by some sort of human activity. So enter Duncan Grieg from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Biology who a few years ago uh, appears to have had a stroke of brilliance uh, that has allowed him to actually answer this question. And he realized that Saccharomyces paradoxalis, uh, which is the closest known species to brewer's yeast, was the perfect way to figure out where brewer's yeast comes from. Now that might seem weird. Why would you use a different species to figure out where another species lives? Well, the reasons are threefold. First is that Saccharomyces cerevisiae is sympatric with Saccharomyces paradoxalis. It just means where one is found, the other is almost always found. They like to live in the same place. They're actually biochemically indistinguishable from each other. We didn't know Saccharomyces paradoxus existed until the genetic technologies came along to identify species based on their DNA. But importantly, paradoxus has never ever been domesticated. So wherever you find it must be the natural home of it, and by extension, the natural home of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So when they started looking for this yeast, they found that they needed to look to their feet. When they looked in leaf litter beneath trees, they found huge amounts of yeast. Some trees, like oak, tree, oak trees, having more than 80% of samples containing this wild yeast. This is also shown in uh, another analysis they did, which showed that by weight, there's a lot more wild yeast present in leaf litter than there is on bark, at least four times more. To sort of answer the question about what do yeast do in the far north, well it turns out in, least in the leaf litter, yeast really don't care about the seasons. There's as much yeast present in October as there is in January or July, say one meter away from the same tree. And these people of course hit a home run and they went back and they looked at apples and they looked at plums and they looked at grapes and all sorts of other things. And they found that you just did not find yeast in those environments. Where you found them was on occasion on oak bark, but far more often in the leaf litter beneath trees like oaks and large trees. So the next time you're out on a wild yeast hunt, take pity on those leaves that have fallen to the ground. Instead of just walking over them, pick up a few. You never know what you might find. <laughs>